very close one. From south coast slabs to north side beach breaks, island orbs and mindless point break perfection. Rivals has given us an intimate view of the waves which made Australian surfing great. So where else would the finale take place than the crown jewel of Australian surfing, Coolangatta. This once sleepy working and welfare class bastion on the New South Wales Queensland border has produced more world titles and more Australian surfing icons than any other. The long groomed walls and challenging tubes have provided the ultimate training ground. The region's products always have one thing in common, style. And over the next two episodes, we're gonna see three of the best to ever do it go head to head to head in pumping behind the rock snapper. You're not waiting for the boys, Joe? Nah, it's, I need all the practice I can get at the moment. <laughs> I've got my All right, I'll see ya. This just seemed like a kind of concept that I could do, you know. It's not 30 minutes, it's not five judges. I don't have Richie Porter screaming down my neck or someone silly like that. So um, it's just, this was a, it was a two hour free surf with your mates and, you know, there's nothing too stressful about it. Morning, Ding. Morning, brother. How are you, mate? Good, good. Joe's up to his old tricks, eh? He's already out there. Is he? Good, he doesn't have much freaking. How are you, mate? Doesn't have much fuel in the tank, that's for sure. He's a bit out of shape. We just said, we're gonna, I'm gonna do it, or someone said we're gonna do it, then we were just like, hey, let's just all do it together tomorrow. And then next thing you know, we're... of course, the competitive juices come in and the heat comes up and I started stretching that moment I got that text and it was on. Surfing with them guys and in a heat, I know how competitive it is. Even when we're, there's no heat on, like there's a heat on. So as soon as there's a, there was an opportunity, it was, um, it was on. Oh my gosh. Joel out there now. Yeah, yeah, he got a good one already. He got like a 20 second barrel out here today on the bodyboard. It's the best bank I reckon I've ever seen. I reckon. You reckon that? Yeah. So we had a groom spell, it'd be all the time, mate. Dingo's frothing in the car park, Joel's frothing out of his skin out there. <laughs> it looks amazing. Look at the period, the waves are stuck that close together. There's plenty of opportunity. Yeah. I think we'll see a great heat. Yeah, we sort of broke the rules a little bit, but I think it was, it was, it was hilarious, you know. It, to, to see Dingo, like, at the start, he seemed so nervous. I'm sure Joel was nervous too because he was out there so early, he reckons he couldn't sleep. Yeah, it's a, it's a great concept. You know, I'm looking forward to it. I couldn't sleep last night. I was so excited. So I'm sure the other boys are too. Look at that thing down there. The bank's almost as good as it gets, eh? I hit me up, see if I grab some fins and a grip. So <laughs> let's see if he comes through. <laughs> yeah, mate. Hey. It's pumping. Is it? Yeah. Probably got like four, three second tubes, like yeah. sick ones on live. All right, I'll find the bar. Rip? Nah, I told you get your own sheet, mate. <laughs> I'm fiddling. Fiddling right. some wax left. Oh, hey, right. You're like one of those trendy dudes. <laughs> yeah, I was just pumped to go surfing with my mates. Like, I was like, how serious do you take this? Are we actually going to go, like, you know, hassle each other and, and stuff like that. 20. Who are you going to be blocking yeah, for out there? Whoever buys me a beer after. <laughs> or maybe Dingo. I might go to Mick this time, maybe Mick. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Blocking, mate. That's what you want. <laughs> I'm going to be burning them. I'm, I'm the heat. <laughs> oh, that's a good thing. There's no priority, so you can. <laughs> Well, I can go surfing and shit talk with my mates, then sign me up. Oh, mate, it doesn't matter what I ride. Are <laughs> <laughs> uh, you forgetting a fin there, mate? Nah! <laughs> After the break, we go deep with Dingo. Your Grom can become a surfer for life this spring and summer at a beach near you. 
You know, there's no um, priority. There's no rules. No so rules. So we can just drop in. I'm just oh, wide and let's in. just sit wide and just <laughs> drop in on Joel. <laughs> Even if we don't get get away, just drop in on Joel. The old hips, mate. Oh, Scotch finger. Scotch finger biscuits. <laughs> when we were kids, it was so funny. We had we had a um, we we're all in a heat at Winky Pop, and oh, Dean, was, right. Dean was winning. I was in third, Joel was in second, but Ding had priority, I wasn't there, and I didn't need a small score to, to beat Joel, so Ding just let me go away. Joel was losing it, blowing up the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard the end of it. And then the next week, Ding did that to me, but it was all good. <laughs> Who won that cop? Uh, did you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, so I first met Dean. Um, we moved from Ballina to the Gold Coast, and um, Dean was the he was the you know the, the golden child at the time. Um, and yeah, got to see him surf D Bar. He was sponsored by Nev. He's you know Billabong. You know he's already getting billboards and stuff and I was just tripping out going, wow, this guy's like a professional surfer, he's like 12. Dean's uh, totally dedicated and, and he often, you know, he wants to know everything about pro surfing and that and the thing is that um, he's aiming high but, you know, it's a long and hard road and uh, if he does the hard work, I'll stick by him all the way. He coaches me and tells me what to do and tells me what I'm doing wrong and all that, so it's good. So it was always my dream ever since I was probably 10 or 11 years old to be a professional surfer and I worked every day on that since that age and uh, he was the one that you know gave me the narrative to kind of give me the pictures yeah oh, okay this is how you do it and uh, you know he raised me from when I was about 14 years old you know I'm grateful that I had him in my life to be able to turn a dream into a reality. Uh, I was going along and I didn't see the rocks at Little Marley and I went straight on all. And then what happened? Oh, I got it. I got a big slice in my toe and all that. And mum had to take me up to the first aid and that, they had to clean me up. There was blood everywhere. <laughs> out of the, were you out of the water for long? Oh, nah. Just with that, went back out that arvo. I was about 13 years old and I got sponsored by Billabong. And honestly, I just thought I was the coolest kid. I had the biggest EEO, like, um, help, like I just, it was, <laughs> it was pretty embarrassing, really. <laughs> Dingo, I'd say for sure. Dingo stood out the most by, by a long shot. I thought technically at that his age was so far advanced from anyone else. Um, I still felt like I was doing kid turns, you know, like little pushes and shoves and stuff, whereas Dingo actually was engaging rails and, and doing a lot longer distance turn. And so he was definitely, definitely the star of that. Go, Dean. I was way smarter than those two. Um, <laughs> Dingo very rarely went to school. Um, and it was funny, like, we got told, oh, this kid's coming to school. Can you guys please look after him? And, and um, you know, and we're like, yeah, I wonder who it is. Like, we knew Dingo was coming, but, you know, to get this speech from the teachers and, um, they're like, oh, I might not have much money or anything like that. And then first day, he rocks up to school and we go to the tuck shop and he pulls out a hundred dollar bill. You know, I'm like... You know, we're trying to scab 10 cents for sauce or whatever it was. And I was just like, what? You know, always, uh, I think he would always skim Rabbit's money jar in the car or whatever. And from where Dingo definitely, you know, came from, um, he's a, you know, amazing human today. <laughs> Oh, okay. The first met Joel was at the Queensland Titles. I think we we're in the under 14s and I was 10, he was nine. It was in 91. And uh, I remember just seeing this kid who was sponsored by Billabong already and Beach Beat. And uh, see anyone with the stickers on their boards back then when you were that young, we were like, oh wow, look at this kid. I've always surfed against the older guys and it has paid off now, but I've really never surfed against my own age very much. Joel was sort of like, you know, when you hear about these different kids around different areas and, you know, everyone was talking about Parco at the time and then, uh, yeah, met him at an event and 
I was thought he was going to be like this Hollywood rock star, but it just turns out to just be Joel. He just had the basics down already, like a really deep, long bottom turn and just really stylish like he is now. But uh, he was like 10 years old. He was just that kid that, he already has that, had that charisma, like he was, he was confident in himself and he was a man. It was awesome to watch him develop into what he is now. Your Grom can become a surfer for life this spring and summer at a beach near you. Welcome back to Cool and Gutter. Home of the Core Lord, where a surfer's talent is rivaled only by their grit. It's a surfer's town. Everyone, you know, most of the people here surf or their life revolves around the beach. And there's a lot of character, there's a lot of uniqueness about the town. And, um, it's a, you know, it's got a special energy here. I'd love to see Mick, Joel and Dean in a heat together. That was all I watched as kids. That was such a crazy generation that came through, you know, like probably one of the biggest rivalries between three people. Mick's pretty ice man at the moment. Joel's been in the good paddock and uh, Dingo's actually coming back fighting that these days too. It'd be good. Who are you going for? Uh, I can Mick will get him. The Sheriff Mick, always mate, always. He's the one who surfs the most. <laughs> Not Dingo. <laughs> Fanny. I reckon Joel could definitely pull something out but depends how enthusiastic he is these days. He's getting a bit slow and daddish. <laughs> Well, the question is, the competitive fire will be burning strong, but can the bodies hold out? That's the only question now. The age will weary them. Dingo, Dingo's got the mongrel in him. He'll never, he'll die with the mongrel in him. <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be out there hassling all of us when he's 80. <laughs> you won't get one on Dingo. He'll drop in on you every chance he gets. <laughs> Mick or Joel are the most two competitive humans I've ever seen. I've seen him fight at touch footy in the oval at sunset. So yeah, they're going to be the most competitive. They would have, from what I heard, they had a heat somewhere up there, all three of them, Dingo as well, and that would have been, you wouldn't have wanted to be out there. That's for sure. I want to go to the Gold Coast and get sick chicks and filthy pits. I just thought of Mick as one of those tough Ballina boys, because the Fanning brothers were pretty popular names just in that you know younger surf scene at the time, and they were all pretty talented surfers. I'm going off to work now, so um, you're all going surfing, are you? And Mick's going to school. I come across his brother Sean first. I kind of see Sean at the events because he was uh, uh, a couple of years older than me. And Mick was just his little brother that would tag along with him. And um, yeah, like we didn't really notice Mick too much. And then one day um, at school, Joel comes back and goes, mate, you should see how good Mick is surfing. I was in year eight. I'm like, really? And then, we, yeah, and then all of a sudden he was just on. Yeah, it's crazy. I had a mental block there for a long time where I, I couldn't beat him. It was just, I don't know why, I just couldn't get over him. Mick was just like this tiny little whippet. It felt like if you, if you were going to hurt him, he was going to break in half. So he was so small and skinny. His wetsuit would have like baggy parts in it. You know, it was like he had a lead of paddle power. It was, he was that skinny for a while. And then, yeah, I guess he filled out for sure. I always just felt like I wasn't as talented as those guys, so I sort of felt like I, I had to work harder. I had to um, look at different ways to figure out how to win, and that instilled a drive in me to, to push as hard as I possibly can. Michael's style, and particularly his attitude, are tailor-made for what we see as the professional surfing scene at the moment. Basically, his potential is up to him, he can go as far as he likes. I want to be a professional surfer for sure. Just, I want to go see the world, surf every wave I can, and just make money out of surfing. The intensity definitely, you know, was, was to win, and we took that to, I guess, the professional junior circuit at the time, which Billabong had, and it was just insane. That was, that was a huge stepping stone for us, was the, the Billabong Junior Series, which was, you know, the best surfers around the country up to 19 years old, so it really took us to another step, that one, I thought. One of us would win an event, the next one would win another one, and then the next one, and we just kept doing that, and then before we knew it, we were top 10 in the world, so it was sort of, I think that leapfrogging effect, just we just wanted to beat each other so bad uh, that, yeah, it just got us to where we got to in, on the world tour.
So I, I qualified in 2001. I think Joel qualified the year before. And there was only five events at that time. I think that's when 9-11 uh, happened. Me and Mick qualified that year. And uh, yeah, then we're all on tour together, the three of us for 10 years. If we were in an event together, it was like, who got furthest, who got furthest? Like, and that was just what kept us driving. And obviously we look at the other guys um, on tour and, and try and beat them as well. But the biggest thing, if you, if you beat, for me anyway, if I beat Dean or Joel at the end of the year in the ratings, I was like, yeah, I won the world title. <laughs> that was it. It wasn't, say, a plan, it was a dream, I guess, to be on tour. Um, I, I dreamed, you know, dreamed of one time making the tour and even dreamed harder about being a world champion and that kind of stuff. It was never something, like, you can plan for. I remember Rabbit telling us one time at D-Bar, on every corner around the world, there's a rat pack like us. And um, so I figured, you know, every killer in Brazil, you know, Brazil to Hawaii to America, there was just a rat pack that was probably better than you know, or as good as us maybe, and you know, they're the guys that will, will go on and be world champions and, and make the tour. And yeah, I guess later in life, we started to realize that it was, we were in a good position that we could do it. Four world titles, countless heat wins and championship tour victories, not to mention more time clocked up in the cone than maybe any other competitor in history. While the sun might have set, on the Cooley Kids CT careers, the fire still burns bright in these hopeless tube addicts. I love just being able to, being out of the, the whole spotlight of it, this, being able to surf, being able to enjoy it, being, being at home, being with kids, it's, you know, it's not something I wanna go back to. I, and I did it for 18 years, or, or 19 years, I guess, when you put in your, your year on the QS where you know, there was a lot of spotlight on us coming through those years. Now I'm, I'm happy to sit back, be a spectator and watch you unfold. I still love surfing, but I just decided I just needed to get away from the tour, but still love everyone on tour. Still a big fan of the tour, I watch it all the time. And I guess that's the unique thing about surfing is that we do it anyway. Even if we weren't professionals, we'd be doing it anyway. Even on our down days, we go surfing. Well, that's where we're really lucky, is that, you know, we're, once you're a surfer, you, you know, it's like, you know, I think Kelly said it, like, it's like the mafia. Once you're in, you never get out. <laughs> the only other real sport I can think that maybe the passion stays would be, would a swimmer still be as passionate? I don't know. Maybe golf. Golfers might want to just go and play still around because they love the feeling of hitting a ball. Just, you know, that's the only reason I'd you know, that I'm still passionate because I love the feeling of getting barreled and doing a good turn and all those things, you know, it's surfing such a feeling sport and I think um, the, the, that's the feeling I'll just chase for forever. I don't think, I'm not chasing the winning feeling, I'm just chasing the feeling of it. Your Grom can become a surfer for life this spring and summer at a beach near you. As a surfer growing up in Coolangatta, you've got your eye on two pieces of silverware, the Gold Coast Pro and the local Snapper Rocks Club Championship. Oh, <laughs> yeah, mate, um, Dingo did. He finally put his name on that trophy. Yeah, that was the Open Club Championship, just the Snapper one. I've actually been trying to win that since I was like 13 years old and I've never won it before. I think Parco's name's on there probably 10 times. And a lot of guys around the area like Chappie Genning, Jennings, Wayne Dean, Rabbit, Bruce Lee, Will Lewis, Jay Phillips. Oh, there's Jay. I actually don't think Jay's on there yet either. So it's kind of a, it's, it's a, you know, it's a memorable trophy to win. I was actually, and I actually won that at the start of the year. So that was a special little moment. I guess I've still got some competitiveness in me. I guess uh, Dingo's beat me twice in the last year and I really want to get back. <laughs> so that's probably it. I reckon he was so nervous that he came to, he didn't sleep last night and uh, that's why he's out there but yeah tricky goal mate hope, he, hope he's had nothing <laughs> the coolie kids have pulled the trigger at pumping snapper but has the game been stacked against Parker well yeah I almost went early at a little spot down the coast and then 
And then I came back and we almost could have done a bit of debar that day. It was almost, you know, over that session we had, we had a couple of waves that day. It was probably not enough, but there was a couple of little moments there, that debar. Um, and then, yeah, I figured snapper's probably a spot where I could probably do my better surfing. A lot harder to get waves, as you're probably going to see in this thing of how many people are fading everyone. Dingo pulled out a couple of guys that, you know, from the woodwork, like Hazards and that, to hassle us and drop in. And it was a bit of a madness of thong, but welcome to Snapper. It's just chaotic and you want to have a bad surf, go to Snapper. It's, unless you walk out there with no expectation, you're not going to enjoy yourself. I'm out there. Wait up. Yeah, I'm out there too. <laughs> Let's go, Haz. Oh, there, That's right. It was so fun that day, and uh, it was good competitively. And you know, he, Joel had his little spot. I knew that he was going to sit and wait behind the rock, and I had my spot. I was going to sit wider, and Mick just kind of played it in between, guys. So it was super competitive, but super fun. Like it, it pushed my surfing that day. I had to surf for a little bit, so I was like, okay, okay. You know, I, had to, I wanted to surf the best I could, which was good. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> Tune in next week for the Coolie Kids Superheat, where we'll be joined by special guest host Vaughn Corn Deadly. Turn on.